universities across the country tried to ban their schools from showing the movie American Sniper. Our next guest, an Islamic feminist, says a Muslim group at Duke University tried to blackball her and do the same thing to her speech. Joining us right now is the author of Standing Alone, An American Woman's Struggle for the Soul of Islam. Astra Nomani joins us today from Pittsburgh. Astra, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. Okay, what did you want to tell the university students at Duke about the plight of Muslim women? Well, the title of my talk was The Paradox of Women in Islam. And, you know, I am a liberal feminist born in India to a mother who literally wore the face veil as she was growing up. And so in this country, I've been able to enjoy the freedoms that America offers. And what I wanted to tell them is that we're living a paradox where there is a progressive spirit in Islam, but sadly, there's this forces within our community that subordinate us, subjugate us, and silence us. And sadly, that's what I saw in, at Duke University. Absolutely. And on this channel, we have talked about that. But apparently at Duke, uh, there are some groups, and you, you've uh, particularly pointed out the Muslim student group. Uh, they found out you were coming, and what happened to you? Well, you know, two years ago, a professor of Islam at Duke University by the name of Omid Safi published a smear against me claiming that I have an alliance with Islamophobes. It's just a very predictable uh, way to try to silence people within our communities. Sure. And so the Muslim Students Association resurrected that dig, and they then issued an email that said that they wouldn't send anybody to the uh, event, which they have a right to do, but that they would also issue a few words of caution about my controversial religious and political views. Right. And so we all know what that does effectively. It scared everyone. Sure. And the sponsoring organization and Duke University decided that they would pull the invitation. I asked them for the evidence, and then a day later, they decided to re-invite me after they looked at the, mm -hmm. quote, variables. And you went down there and you talked to nine people. Uh, apparently, everybody else yeah. had been scared off. What, this is troubling. I mean, obviously, there are a lot of people who want to hear what uh, Muslim women face in this world, but apparently, there are forces at Duke University who don't want that to happen. Well, there are forces in our world, and I call these forces the Honor Brigade. They are people, bloggers, academics, what writers, don't they and activists. Want you, what don't they want you to say? They don't want to, quote, tarnish the true image of Islam. And so what they want to do is protect the honor of this faith. What they don't want us to talk about is the reality of a, of a situation in which, sadly, Muslim women are treated like second-class citizens in way too many communities, including the U.S., we are put in the back of the mosques. We are not even allowed in through the front doors at some mosques. And this is, to me, a tragedy. And we, we serve the religion and we serve the country and the world best if we forge ahead with sure. a gender jihad, a, a jihad that fights for women's rights along with all people's rights. Well, you're speaking up today and you, your writings as well. And we thank you very much for getting up early today and joining us from Pittsburgh. Asra Nomani, journalist and thank author you. of Standing Alone, An American Woman's Struggle for the Soul of Islam. Ma'am, thank you very much. Thank you.